today we're going to talk about why your emotions create intimacy. We have our upcoming emotions, embracing your emotions class coming up. And as I was thinking about this, I want to explain this to you so that hopefully you can see and understand why this is so important for men. So while both men and women have emotions, yes, it's important for both. What I find a lot of times with women is, is that when I talk about emotions or when they come to me, there's a relationship struggle or there's frustration. It's not necessarily always the woman's fault. And we talk about emotions and most of the time they've either learned growing up or had People tell them, don't be so emotional. You're being overly emotional. Men have said this to them. Maybe they've said them to you also. And of course they think, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to overdo such a thing because we all have pictures of someone that's overly emotional. They cry at the drop of a hat. They complain about everything. Everything bothers them. But the problem with that is it's called the whole phrase of throwing the baby out with the bathwater is they overuse that because when we start to press down on the emotions we don't get the option to pick which ones emotions are like the fingers of my hand once you sort of pinch one off the rest tend to follow so most folks would say i don't want to feel angry anger is bad i don't want to feel sad um, i don't want to be mean or horrible and distinction number one is what you feel is not the same thing as who you are what you feel is also not the same thing as what you do. It is possible to be angry and not hurt someone. It's possible to, to be really sad and still be able to go about your day and function at work and even have a good time, maybe not as the best of times, on a date. We tell us with children all the times, I'm, I'm sorry you're upset or sad, but we still have to go to school. Because if what you feel means who you are, then your worth and your value is going to go up and down each day or each week. And that's what a lot of folks have been taught. So if that's the case, then I'm going to shut down down and pinch off a lot of these emotions I don't want. But the effort it takes to shut down after a while feels fairly normal. It's easy to sort of numb out without actually feeling that way. In fact, being numb is what scares me actually more than someone being depressed. Because being numb it takes such efforts like putting wax over someone's heart, which leads to point number two. The tendency is, and especially as a woman becomes more professional, um, she's more educated, you know, uses her you know, thinking processes more, is that I can keep this part guarded, but in a relationship, that's when it's safe to come out. And how do I know this? Because I have most of my higher level clients, they do well in so many areas that they're, they're very astute, they're used to making things happen, and then they get in a relationship and feelings get involved, which feel wonderful initially. It feels great, but the problem we said earlier with feelings is when you pinch one off, they all follow. The other thing works too, is once you start to wake up feelings, the rest tend to come out also. So while joy and happiness and all those fun ones come, the insecurities come out, the fears come out, the doubts come out, and inevitably someone will say, I just need to be stronger. And now they're trying to push those feelings down they don't like and prop up the ones they do and it works terrible. Folks think they can do that. I'm going to be positive all the time. You can do that. It is beyond exhausting. And then point number three is if you do this over time, these are intimacy killers because a man will feel like it's his responsibility to make you feel a certain way, to prop up those feelings. He may even want to take out the responsibility, but he can't do it because if I pinch off certain parts of my emotions, if I keep those suppressed, what happens is I don't want to look at those. I don't want to experience that. I don't want to feel that. I don't even want to think that. I don't like that side of me. That's why folks at times don't want to talk about their past. They say, oh, that was in the past. Remember the goal of talking about the past is not let's relive that and go through that again. The goal of talking about the past is so we can heal it. it but because it's not that you're in the same place when you were younger. It's that when there's injuries and someone suppressed feelings, the coping skills, the things they're using to keep that stuff in place is really powerful, but it also keeps someone getting close because if I'm not willing to look at that place, I will not let you look at that place either. I'll let you look at the places or parts of me or feelings that I'm comfortable with, but the other parts, no. When I'm talking with clients or even on this Facebook or YouTube, I'll share stuff. I'll share stories that might seem vulnerable to some, but they're measured. I'm certainly not going to get on and share my deepest secrets or the fears I've had or I'm not going to do that. It wouldn't be appropriate in this setting. And in this setting, that's okay. That setting would not, that, that approach would not work out well with those that are closest to me. So our emotions class, what we designed that to do was to make it as safe as possible and fun at the same time. Is how can a woman, when I say get in touch with your feelings, it's not that she has to go hunting for them. Or let's, like we take a pick, an axe, and a shovel. We're not digging. They're there. They'll come if you let them. And when they come, what you also start to experience is a lot of freedom. Women have gone through this talk about it feels lighter. They'll say, 
you know, normally this would bother me. It's not bothering me as much because oftentimes they enter with the, usually they'll trust me. The reason they come in is they've gotten to know me and trust me. They're like, okay. But the fear is, oh my God, once they get in touch with this, they're going to take over. And I say, it doesn't work that way. I know that's your fear and perhaps you've seen that in others and maybe that's what you've experienced at times. I'm afraid if I feel this, it'll never stop. That's all we do it for three months is I'm going to show you how I talk to your feelings, how I would you know, approach them and say to and you're going to get to learn from me. All you have to do is just do exactly what I say. And then you'll, you'll actually feel the difference. Not immediately, because it still feels a little you know, new to begin with. But as the weeks go by, you will. This is our most in-depth and highest level program we have. And it's also the one that I can come the closest to a guarantee. Because so far, with all the ones we've had to go through, we have not had anyone complain or say this didn't work. Because I'd want to know. I want to know what we can do to make it better. So if you find a relationship that's struggling, I'm not necessarily pointing it all on you, but I am asking you to be curious if there's a pattern. And the thought is, I just need to find the right guy. I mean, there's something to that. We do want to find the right guy, but finding him is not going to fix if there's a fear excuse me, or apprehension about him getting close. If you're not willing to look inside for honest reasons, I mean, people do this honestly. Clients I've talked with that have gone through abuse when they were younger, they had to survive. They had to keep folks at a distance, totally understood. But that desire to connect, that desire for intimacy doesn't go away. You can bury it. You can mask it. You can act like it's no big deal. You can intellectualize it. I just need more tips. need a couple more strategies. And I'm all for those. But those will not take the place of looking inside. And it doesn't mean you have to be in touch with every feeling. In fact, the irony is, as women go through this, what they find is they're not thinking about their feelings all the time. They're not like constantly wondering. And when something, what the idea is when a feeling comes, it doesn't last as long. Feelings do not have to rule your life. In fact, far from it. Feelings are there to enhance. Feelings are there to warn. You know, part of the idea with the feeling of scared, scared's a good thing. Scared lets you know that something's wrong or could hurt you. And when folks say, oh, I'm overreacting, I say, well, maybe overreacting, but let's just pay attention to what you're feeling. And I don't mean like every, you know, strange thought that goes through your mind. So ladies, if this speaks to you, this is the pathway to intimacy. This is what enables you to let a man come close. And not only that, when you're on dates with him, whether you're married with him, this is what makes it safe for him to open up. You are the ones that are better at emotions than men are. You live in that world. Even if you're quote, shut down, or even if you're detached from it, even as a woman, you're more used to this. Men are not. Men take their cues from women. Men open up and share because a woman makes it emotionally safe, which doesn't mean she coddles to him. She doesn't mean that she just accepts everything he wants. No, she models because she's looked inside. She's comfortable with it. She's looked inside and everything's scary or, or quote, bad. She's already looked at. And when she does this, it becomes almost impossible for anyone to shame her because there's nothing anyone will point out or see that she's not already made peace with. So this speaks to you. Let us know. Reach out to us. We'd love to have you in there. So thanks for those and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one. If you like this, be sure and click the like below and tell us what you like. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time and join us at RelationshipHeadquarters.com.